then, so I want to stop in the middle of this fiasco and just point something out. Now, if we come in closer, and master zoom, like that, you'll see that these dogs here are back up. They're literally, you can see the angle on them, they're literally back up. And this is where people say, oh Matt, remember you did that video about saying back cut was back uh, um, back cutting on dogs is bad. Yes. And what I said in that video was that these gears have been cut to this profile. So the teeth have been cut, the uh, bores have been broached, right? So all the splines have been broached into the, you know, into the, the, the bore, like so, you know what I mean, on these gears. These have been um, probably ground or machined off the faces. A lot of them are actually machined. This surface has been machined. All of it has been done, right? All of them things have been done. This groove has been machined. These holes have been drilled. And then the gear has been case hardened, which means that the hard surface on here, on the front of the dog, on the hard surface on all the gear teeth, on these side flanks are all hardened. The case hardening can be a millimetre deep, something like that. It doesn't have to be crazy, right? It's all about the heat treatment. And the guys who do this do not know the heat treatment. Right? You, you fucking good luck ever finding that information out. Especially on bygone bikes, you know, bikes that are 10 years, 20 years old. You'll never find that information out. And what you do is you've got a straight flank of a dog that's a bit, na you know, a bit knackered and stuff, and then you just mill it off. So you're massively eating in or completely wiping out a section of that case hardening. And that's the problem. You have your gears back cut and they just mush. Right? They just turn to mush in no time. And then you've still got the same problem. Right? The better thing to do is to stop in the fucking wimp and buy the gears. Uh, buy them second hand you know, for a lower mileage bike or whatever. You buy the gears and you just replace them. Just willy nilly back cutting because you've seen that an OEM has done it doesn't mean that they are equivalent, right? They're not the same thing. This has been machined like this has, right? And then you just cut into it, right? And that's not what these are. Just wanted to point that out. Master of pull out. So what I'm doing, you've seen me, fucking hell. So what I've been doing in this is just visually, just in checking all the teeth of all the other gears to make sure that, I, you know, your your eyesight and your, your brain is very good at going, aha! <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very good at doing that. But, you know, pattern recognition and stuff. All of this gear teeth, ah, everywhere, you can get lost in the noise of it. So literally, I've just been going like this, just concentrating on one gear and just scanning through the whole set and just looking at all the teeth to see if they're fucking mullered or not. You know what I mean? Um... So, and I've also, you might have noticed, that I've marked up this gear on both sides. I've crossed these off so I don't accidentally put something back in. You might think that's silly. Look at the fucking teeth missing, Matt. How could you miss it? It's happened. It's happened to me and it's happened to loads of other people, right? There's so many fucking gears flying around and you're looking at a parts diagram of exactly what the assembly is and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And trying to get your washes the right way and doing this, that, and the other, and you're getting so focused on what you're actually doing that you might just miss something simple. You know, that one's easy, but this one isn't actually. It's not as easy to notice. So, they've been sin binned, and I put that in there. So, if this bike then explodes in a year's time or something, and there will be people, and they might be right, will say, it's that TL gear you put in there, Matt. It wasn't meant to be in there, or blah, blah, blah. Maybe it was inferior or something shit like that. When we open it up, just say it, and we find out it's this gear that fucking exploded. Well, that's not the TL gear. You know what I mean? So, in a sense, that's the whole point is, why not, right? It's a bit of ink. It, well, a bit of paint, actually, in this in this uh, example. But you know what I mean? Why not? Why not mark it up and say what it is? The other thing I was trying to show in the video there as well is the difference in lengths of the shafts. Uh, it's not that one. It's this one. So this shaft is the TL one. And if we put them end to end, there's literally about 15 mil. Uh, end to end, like that, there's about 10 to 50, but I think it's 10 mil. 10 to 15 mil missing off the end. Yeah, they are the same length. Well, I could even 
Will this stretch far enough? No, well, where's my other couches? I saw them yesterday. The big dickhead long ones. Why not fucking this? And I don't usually have tape measures. It's not something I usually carry around. Oh, yes I do. Not a tape measure. Um, this is my rough, rough and ready scale I use for doing more well, stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> so that's about 24. And the TL one is about 23. Yeah, so it's about 10 mil. I say about because I'm, I'm that's not perfectly a way of measuring. I always say about if it if it's like this, and I go, oh that's twenty two point nine six. I'll I'll literally say that. Where if it's if I'm doing it by you know just fucking guesstimating by eye of like your parallax and all that shit, it's about. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's the TL one. You can fuck off. Um, but yes, the uh, SV one is longer. Probably to accommodate, and this is just a guess, that probably that 10 mil is to accommodate the slipper clutch function, I believe. Don't quote me on that one though, I'm not 100% on that. I think. I think therefore I am. Right, uh, so I'm just going to crack on and start putting it all together. One more thing I want to add is that, I'll use it this, it's just before I was about to kick off. There is a hole in this shaft. If you can make that out, fuck me, that's tiny. Master Zoop. There we go. See, there's a hole in that shaft there. And on the other side, there's another hole. Right, going straight through. Because this is hollow, is this shaft. You can see daylight through there. Like that. And in this shaft, where the selector fork rides, you can see oh, there's a hole. Right, They have to line up. Not that way. Because, yes, they oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, they have to line up. Now, you may, it's hard, it's going to be hard to see, is this, you, you won't be able to see it properly. No, you won't be able to see. Now, in this case, actually, I can use these gears. Just say that's the hole in one, they may do that, yeah? So they don't line up concentric, like, perfectly like that. They line up like that. That is fine. Right, that is fine. The oil will go like that and it'll work its way through like that. It doesn't matter that they're not lined up perfectly. You will not get them to line up perfectly most of the time. Um, the reason why is it, it, dep it, dep it depends on the orientation. Now you might think, well, what happens if you spin it around, Matt? Like if you spin it around the other way. Because of the... Well, no, sorry, this, is, this has only got one oil feed hole in it. It, it doesn't have to be pressurised oil to turn this around. It will turn the shaft the other way around and do the same thing. I'll see if I can get a picture of that, because I can get a picture of that. Let me grab my phone. And all the ones that are splined together have to be like that. Anything that rotates, it doesn't matter. Right, let me... So there's the hole. There we go. Did that actually come out good? Yeah. So you can see from this picture, <laughs> I so if I remember to put it in because I'm always a fucker for doing that. Um, that hole has to line up. You can see how it's it's not perfectly concentric. You know what I mean? It's not perfectly concentric, but it's close enough, and that is good enough. So sometimes you will get. Um... Can I find one? Is the one? Sometimes you'll have. Uh, is this one? This is one. Fuck me! Is that stuck? Sometimes there's burrs on these shafts. Holy shit! Sometimes you'll have rings like this that are splined. Same dealio. Some of them, like this one, has a hole. You see the hole there? It has a hole that has to line up with the hole on the shaft right if it does not you will starve certain sections of your gearbox of oil and it will die it will die and it will be very painful and very expensive <laughs> right i'm going to shut the fuck up and i'm just going to uh well i'm going to put this gear on properly that might be a good idea i'm the wrong fucking way you bell end come on 
There we go. There we go. Is that the tree on the right one? It's on the bottom now. Right then. Right, so there was a, um, I was just looking for the washer and I remembered that the SV washer, so it, it's basically like one of, it's one of these and then you get a washer to go with it and I chucked it away, I've just remembered. And the reason why is, is that the TL one comes with this integrated, this integrated washer and um, bearing ring. A thrust washer kind of thing, basically, it's a bit of a bore. The only problem is, I can see why they replaced it because you've got to line up your teeth, you've got to pre line up your teeth and make sure you don't fuck that up. Or you can do what I actually did do, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> fucking redoing the same thing. So I can line up the holes, you see, and then you just pop it on the shaft like that. So instead of having this and an extra washer. It's an integrated thing. And I thought, because this is the TLG, you can literally see the colour difference. I hope you can see the colour difference. Um, I thought, let's keep it. Let's keep it the way it is. Any road. So this is the circlip that come off. I'm going to get rid of that. And I the parts and files are taking so fucking long because of COVID and all this shite. That I went on uh, eBay and put the part number in and got a circlip for like literally two pounds. So when it does turn up, I'll have an extra circlip, which is not really a problem. Um, but yeah, I got a new circlip because that is good practice to replace anything that's been stretched out of shape. The only problem is now, and what you do is you check when I, I, I did check this before, when you push this on, you can literally see that there's enough room for the circlip. So the dimensions are the same so i'm all good about that and i've got an extra spare fucking shafted what is it if i need it and that is the two gearboxes, the two have become one. That's what's happened. Two have become one. I'm sure, there's a, is it a Spice Girls song. I need some love like I've never needed fuck before. <laughs> something like that. Wow, you can see why. You can see why something. Any road. So that's uh, gearbox one and gearbox two. Uh, shafts sorry these are the shafts that go together and hopefully if you plonk all your gears together and get them to sit then you should have a straight parallel shaft so this shaft should be parallel to that one and they should roll around each other nicely and when we actually look at these two gears so this gear set and this gear set that we've replaced everything should look hunky dory and believe it or not everything does everything rolls around nice nothing is being a dick right nothing is rattling Ooh, the light right i'm trying to get the light right i would like that light to sit i need a do you know what i need i literally need some light stands i'll fabricate some put that there. Oh, fuck me, that's blinding the fuck out of me. That works with the camera really well. So yeah, you should get this. Right, I don't know if everything's moving a bit, but fuck it. Um, yeah, you should get that. If you think about it, right, that's 12 gears interlocking. It's not really naked, there's no clanking, no fucking absolute disaster. And that mates really well 
and we should be able to roll like that lovely 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 right so that's the gearbox is done um cases are getting prepped you'll see some videos on that that's literally probably this week coming up um I don't know, I just, I just want to blast through it. I really just want to blast through it and wait for these parts to turn off. Um, there's also one little thing I will add as well. The uh, gasket, uh, the oil seal that goes in here. Um, fucking hell, they wanted shitloads for it. And I was like, it can't be that fucking hard of a seal to find. And I did, I found it for £2.50. It's literally a Suzuki spec one. You put the Suzuki number in, out spits a seal, and jobs jobs are good in a Suzuki packet that obviously someone has for a project left over, or what have you. The next thing I also want to do is I want to have a good look at the selector forks. Actually, I'll, we'll turn that into another video, um, because it's you know it is a subject on its own. So what we'll do is we've got two sets. Obviously, we've got this one. We've got the um, TL ones. We'll check them um, because I've got the full thing. So we'll check the TL seals, uh, and we'll check the um, seals, forks. Or, or, or these aren't fucking seals, you bell end. We'll check these uh, SV ones. We'll check the TL thousand ones, and we'll literally measure across them. We'll have a look at them. Make sure they're identical first. That's the other thing, just to make sure that. Uh, this distance from there to there, this gap in here is wide enough, it should be all the same. This dog is the same length and bloody stick out and all the rest of it. And then what we'll do is we'll um, measure basically across the flats, because one of them feels really ropey. It's actually that one. It feels really ropey. Um, and also we'll go around with a oil stone and just clean up some bits. Um, take some burrs off a few little things that have just raised them due to wear. Stuff like that. Once we've got the gearbox done, once we've got this shit all cleaned up, the cases all cleaned up and all this shit, all the gunk, all the um, all this silicon sealant that's still left on all these mating surfaces, because these have just been washed to these cases. Uh, I'll clean all that shit off, we'll prep them, we'll get them ready, we'll have a look at the main bearings. Uh, cylinders, heads, we'll check the heads, I want to check them for cracking, all the valves are good, nothing's excessively worn, that kind of shit. Actually, all of the valve stuff has got to come out because I want to clean the cylinder heads. So all of the valve shit's got to come out. The valves, everything, unfortunately. But um, if you want to do a job properly, you got to do it properly. Um, but, yes. Oh, the other thing I want to say as well is that I'm sat here assembling this. You can't see, but over there... Where's my phone? I'll take a picture of it. There, on the screen, you can see... Um, is the the parts break down? So I'm literally just going washer, thrust washer, circle it, blah blah, and just going through like that, like you know, like for like, like that. You know, you can't. You could work this out over time. You know what I mean? Anything that moves against anything that's stationary, you have to have a thrust washer. And you know, looking at the shaft, you can see where circlips go and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you know. It's just it's just the way you rock and roll. It's just the way you party. And um, there's a washer sat on the end of there. That's the end of the shaft. So it goes against the bearing. And you can see there's a nice circle there. On a lot of these things, they have circlip wear marks. Um, I don't know if you saw in the video, but some of them have an impression of a circlip on the side of the thr thrust washers. Uh, this one, this gear at the end here, that just shit, that, that's a thrust surface that's actually in... You know, it's incorporated into the gear, and that just basically sits against the bearing there. Same thing with this side, that just sits against the bearing there, and this side it just has the stop. Right, so it literally just has a shoulder as part of the shaft that just sits as, again as a thrust washer, uh, as a bearing surface, a thrust a thrust bearing. Um. So yeah, so that should be our problem, fucking sorted. And one thing there is to just talk about, about making sure and going to some measuring everything and going to the extent of does this gear match this one, right? You've got to remember that this third gear here also has fourth gear. It's also incorporated into fourth gear. 
which then goes into fourth gear here. So this is TL, that one, TL, TL, SV. So these are in isolation. You could, if you're worried or they weren't matching up, you could make the TL1000 gear and you put a TL1000 gear in here as well because this is a uh, free rotating gear as you can see. Right, so oh, if I just move that, make it easier. So these two gears are free spinning gears. So you could replace this one with the TL one as uh, with the SV one as well if you wanted to. I'm pretty confident that they all match up um, if they were the right way. There we go. That might make sense a bit more. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah, I am very confident that they match up and they're fine, just because of the measurements I've taken. Like I said, the only difference between the TL ones is they have literally a 10% of the crown, uh, of the very crown, the very tip of the gear taken off, which really isn't really doing anything. And uh, the meshing of the gear and the gear tooth count means that even though you might think, oh, this tip here is just about to flake off that one, these two are well in, this this is well in engagement and this one's starting. So there isn't any, you can't get a, a slip gear. You can't get a slip tooth out of it. Um, and you can tell when you when you put the shafts together and rattle around. When we put them in the gearbox, I'll do a test run, because I need to put, all, obviously, the bearings back in the casings. We'll plonk these two shafts in, fuck the um, selector drum, and we'll just turn them... Um, you know, obviously there is a bit of end play because there's no bearing on the other side, but we'll just turn them and you'll be able to see yourself that there's no there's no way that you can miss them. To get them to even miss, you'd have to splay the shafts out like fucking you know, Legs of Kimbo. Legs of Kimbo, the uh, theatre uh, group, put yourself in a child, if you get that reference. Hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> 